Bienvenue et cuisinons dans la capitale. Today we have three French recipes accompanied by a few wine pairings. First, Chef Olivier from ICI Urban Bistro will teach us his braised lamb shank served over a goat cheese polenta. This is a delicious French dish that you will not want to miss. Then we will make French onion soup covered with slices of baguette and melted Swiss cheese. And for our sweet ending, a baked cherry clafouti. Sweet cherries are covered in a thin pancake-like batter and baked in a hot oven until the batter is brown. Bon appétit! I'm here with Chef Olivier from ICI Urban Bistro in the Sofitel Hotel. And we are going to do some bistro cooking. And he is going to show us how to make an amazing lamb dish. We're going to braise lamb shank and put it on top of goat cheese polenta. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do to start off this dish? So we're going to... Uh just a little bit of olive oil in the, in the pot. Huh? Now, what temperature do we want our Temperature, pan? but sauté, so it's like uh, sauté is medium, medium high, yeah. because you want the coloration also of the, of the meat. So during the time you heat the pan, you just season in your... Uh, season your lamb. Your, your lamb, yes, with salt. This is a mixture of salt and pepper, so... Yeah, very nice, perfect. Yeah, you always want to... Can add a little well bit more brown paper if we have... Sure. Yeah, great. There we go. Thank you. I love paper. Oh yeah. You gotta have uh, so pepper to spice up the dish. Yeah. <laughs> well, be sure it's very important to really seasoning the, the, the meat at the beginning. Like that, it's going to taste better at the end. Mm, yeah. If you don't season your meat, uh, you can it's add a lot of... Yeah, it tastes very bland. Gamey. Yeah, you can mm. put salt at the end and the sauce is not going to work. Yeah. You need really uh, a good seasoning at the beginning. So I'm okay, going to, to sear the meat. Uh, so just on both sides, I mean, take a tongue, a tongue, yeah. yes. yes, just spray it a little bit, just to have a nice coloration. The key to braising though is you always want to sear the meat, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you always sear your meat before. Lock in the flavor and yeah. have the nice brown color on the brown outside color. rather than yeah, yeah. mushy meat. Yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit small. So we are almost there. Huh? So That's looking good. Nice coloration. Nice color. Yeah. Nice color. It smells really good. Yeah, great. Yeah. After that, I'm going to uh, just take up the, the meat from the from the dish. Nice brown color. Nice brown. Let's put that on, on the side. Now we're going to add the vegetable. A little bit of onions. So I noticed it's just a rough chop because... Yeah. But it's just gonna braise yeah, down, right? The idea you don't, you will not have that in your dish. It's just right. to give the taste. Just so give the flavor, yeah. Yeah, flavor, flavor. Flavor of the carrot, flavor of the onion, and the celery. So that you want to have a wood spoon. Wood spoon. That looks good. Smells good. That's looks good. good. Now, do you season the vegetables too, or? No, you can no? just saute like that. You can just saute. Um, little bit of coloration. So. For this dish, we're going to pair it with two wines. You said you knew a little bit about this wine. You've Gigomas, had it. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. Top wine. of the line. Good Giron, yeah. Excellent. With um, the 70% Grenache, yeah. 25% Syrah, and 5%. Mourvesh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great mix. <laughs> I'm still learning my pronunciation of the uh, grapes. So I have a little bit of tomato concassé also. With the vegetable. And it's going to continue just to. A little bit of coloration. That looks good. Yeah. And all those little bits of food and lamb at the bottom will be. Yeah. Uh, when we pour the red wine into the glaze, yeah, you yeah, deglaze. it'll so pick up all the little now you are almost bits done. of flavor. Yeah. You can deglaze with uh, with the wine, not the gigondas, it's still good for them. Yeah, too nice for deglazing. Deglaze. That's my favorite part. Yeah. Deglaze and reduce. Deglaze, yeah, yeah, reduce, you reduce. So the idea you reduce, all, uh, always you reduce while you do that, you want to take off the, 
the alcohol, you know, in, inside, so yeah. you need to reduce uh, the wine. So just wait a little bit for that. Then this other wine is a Romanese, mm -hmm. uh, Domaine Bon Croz, and um, this is 50% Syrah and 50% um, Grenache, and the Syrah is aged in oak. Yeah. And this will also go nice. This is a um, little bit less expensive of wine than this, so mm -hmm. these are both nice pairing options for this dish, and they'll really bring out the flavor of the lamb. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So after that, we're going to add uh, me. What I use for that, I use some veal, uh, veal stock, so veal demi glace. Veal demi glace yeah. or veal stock. Okay, it's some, uh... Yeah, that's the good stuff. Yeah. And. Uh, so we have the veal stock, ah, okay. And uh, we're going to add some uh, garlic, either garlic, one or two pieces of garlic. Uh, you need some thyme and parsley thyme over and here? Thyme and parsley, yes. How yeah. much do you like? Like uh, two, three, yeah, it's perfect. Oh. Two, two, three pieces, great. Um, this is all from Shenandoah Growers from the, the area, local, oh, from yeah. Virginia. Local, yeah. nice, nice. I use local uh, produce in every center, so mm. from uh, Virginia. Also nice. a little bit bell leaves. And you just what about this? Like you have this over here too. Oh, we can add rosemary also, <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> you right. can add rosemary to everything. <laughs> piece of me, what uh, rosemary we have. Mm. A little piece of uh, lemon. I like the, uh, so the lemon, I add that, yes, it with acidity, you know, the yeah. dish. And the lamb shank. Ooh, that looks good. If you miss it a bit uh, liquid, you can add more. And we're going to cover that the in the oven for two hours or two so. Two hours almost. And at uh, 3, 320. So that's nice to close there. Is it too hot? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, let's make this goat cheese polenta. Mm -hmm. So, chicken stock, uh, basic. So, we add slowly polenta. And you whip. You don't stop to whip, huh? Just so. Do you cook with a lot of polenta in France? No, it's very Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Italian. We, we, uh, yes, Italian. So that's why maybe. So you're going to see my technique, yeah. <laughs> technique of the polenta. If I need yeah. help, let yeah. me know. <laughs> so what I'm using me when it like, starts to be too dry like that, I use some cream. Cream. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I continue to cook with cream. That's my French uh, side, yeah. French style. <laughs> so it's a very creamy polenta. And um, what you need to do, of course, you need to season it. The, the salt, salt and pepper. pepper. Yeah, you can add it a little, right? Mm. Okay. A little bit more? Yeah, okay. Okay. A little pepper? Yeah. There you go. It's more easy to cook. Uh, two people to cook is more yeah. easy. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you need four hands. Yeah. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen at the restaurant, right? Yeah. That'll help. We have, uh, yeah. I will almost uh, 15 cooks there. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a hotel, so you know. Uh, now, is there so two restaurants? Is the bar area a restaurant too, or so just have, a bar? Yeah, I have the, we have the bar, uh, bar restaurant also, is like. Bar food? Bar food, yeah, yeah. bar food. But I, I, will, I keep a, also a French touch there with tartine, a few, few French sandwiches. Oh, uh, nice. And we have uh, more tapas. Croque monsieur. Croque monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to add some uh, goat cheese. Okay. For the goat cheese. Uh, so you want me to cut a yeah, piece sure, for you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. What, how okay. big? Small piece. But that affects you. If you love che goat cheese. Oh, I love add, goat cheese. Well, you can have more, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never done, I've never added goat cheese to plants, oh. but that's a really great yeah, idea. It's, yeah, it's, it's very good. Yeah, you usually in Italy, you have the parmesan. Yeah, parmesan. You can have more, a little bit more. Mmm, that's really creamy. Yeah. You could even put this on but just a baguette or something. Yeah, on baguette. But it's mm. perfect for the polenta because it's, it's going to, uh, to soft or just uh, soft more easily. You know, cook more easy. So you can ta go. really taste yeah. it. Mmm, that's like the creamiest yeah. goat cheese. Is it good, huh? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I serve this cheese in the restaurant. Really it's very, uh, very good. 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 Very good
I love I love to see goat yeah. cheese like right on a yeah a baguette or yeah baguette yeah. toasted pan fried good no yeah huh? well I didn't try it so maybe that little bit salt huh? yeah oh that's good really ah. creamy that'll be perfect with the lamb yeah, with the lamb so you very yeah yeah good combination good um combination of textures yeah and, mm, all right that's good. Polenta is finished. Polenta is <laughs> finished. All right, now it's time to plate our lamb shank. Mm -hmm. And we have removed it from the oven and we've taken it out. And now we're reducing the sauce down the sauce, to yeah, make a yeah. jus uh, with more time. A little bit more time, more garlic. Yeah. A little bit more taste. And um, let's him boiling. And uh, we'll add a little bit of olive oil just to melt the sauce. So, okay. so let's just add extra virgin olive oil. Good one. Huh? Just melt it a little bit, melt the sauce, okay? Just oh, to okay. be sure Mounting. the sauce, yeah, melt it, yeah. We're going to add the taste of the olive oil just to add the sauce more. more oh, I thought, don't you usually melt with butter? No, we can do both with the olive oil, yeah. you can do that, yeah. I think it's the Italian uh, style. <laughs> <laughs> so we just let let like that, just boil Okay, it so now bit. we, so we just take a little polenta. Polenta with goat cheese, add in the, in the dish, you know? A bit more. Looks okay. good. Yeah, great. Add your uh, lamb shank on it. So this is one serving? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a nice portion. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to serve the sauce on the top? Ooh, that looks good. Ooh. On it. I mean, what I do is yeah, I add a little bit herbs on it so if we have more time, fresh time. There we go, yeah. We can just just chop on it. Ooh. A bit of flavor last minute. It's very important in, in the in the recipe. Uh, the, the last touch is uh, always the kick of your recipe. So it can be a lemon juice, it can be herbs, it can be a little bit pepper. You know, that's the, the final touch of the chef is very, very important in food. On you can cover it to be sure the dish stay hot if you can because it look like a little bit. <laughs> this is a big lamb. <laughs> big lamb. <laughs> and you just cover it and it's ready to go. And you go, voila. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. The Capital Cooking Cookbook really showcases DC because we have such a mix of cuisine here. We have ethnic food, we have a wide variety of top chefs around DC that have been on the show and that have contributed their recipes to the book. There's Indian, there's Panamanian, there's Moroccan cuisine. I have my Midwest roots and so you will also find some of the casserole recipes and stuff that we made back home. And that's where my heart is and so I had to bring a little bit of that out in the book because that's how we cook back home. My favorite recipe in the Capital Cooking Cookbook would probably be my baked brie. It's really good and it's a puff pastry dough and it puffs up and you have the fruit and the nuts and the creaminess of the cheese. It's really good. There'll be something for everyone. We have desserts, cocktails, appetizers. Buy it, have fun with it. You'll love the photography. You're going to find that the book is just as diverse as the city. All right, we are gonna make some French onion soup, which is pretty much a classic bistro dish, wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah, very, very Any classic. bistro, you could pretty much find. Yeah, we, you'll find that in every uh, bistro restaurant, French. So very we're gonna, soup. we start, I like to start with some butter mm -hmm. because I like the flavor it gives to the onions. Mm -hmm. And I'll add a little oil too, but this is um, six sliced onions. Um, you don't wanna mince them or chop them or anything. You just want to have slices so you have the rings of the onions still. You just put those into the pan. And really you want your onions to get a nice, some nice color on them. So, and you add a little um, salt and pepper. And they're just gonna reduce down a bit before we um, add the rest of our ingredients. So we have a nice wine that we're gonna pair with this. Yeah, another, <laughs> another great Côte de Rhone. <laughs> so it's a Grenache, this one, so uh, Vin Sobre, uh, Hambre. So, uh, Côte d'Iron with uh, Grenache and Syrah. And then I put a little olive oil too. How is it? Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. So is it more mild than the wines for the lamb? Yeah, I would say so like a... Lighter? Lighter, lighter wine, yeah. But great, great. So that it can hold up, it will pair better with the soup because the soup isn't as powerful yeah. as the lamb. Yeah. Okay, now it's time to deglaze and we're going to deglaze with this Delice wine which is also from the Cote de Rhone region. You want to use a wine that isn't oaky and these grapes have not been aged in oak. So it, if you do that, it will just, it won't give the same type of flavor that you want. You don't want that oak flavor to be overpowering on your dish. So th these grapes have acidity and um, some citrus flavors and things like that, but no oak. So just remember when you're making the soup, you can use whatever wine you like, but make sure that there's no oak. This is a really nice um, wine also imported from uh, First Vine. And it's a light wine, it's very nice. You can also, you know, you put about a cup of wine in the, in the pot to deglaze and then take the rest and drink it with the dish. Yeah, perfect. So we've cooked the alcohol away just like yeah. we did. You reduce? Uh, yeah, reduce. Uh, get all the bits up, all the, the good bits of flavor. And now we are going to add a bay leaf and a little bit of thyme, just a sprig of parsley. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to add some stock. Chef let me use some of his really good veal good stock. stock yeah. But you can use beef stock, chicken stock, you know, and you just kind of want to cover the onions. Nope. Yeah, that's good. So small. That's good. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. Um, and then a little bit of water too. Mm -hmm. that'll reduce down. Right. So you just kind of want to cover the onions and then you're going to let it simmer and then you're going to basically let it thicken up and reduce the amount of liquid probably for about 45 minutes or so. You can cover it partially or if you want it to cook faster you can just cook it un uncovered. You want it to come to a simmer, not boil but a simmer and then reduce it down and then it'll be ready to go into the bowls. All right, our French onion soup is ready for the next step. So we're just going to spoon some of it into our special French onion soup bowls that my pottery teacher from my high school actually made for me. Uh, his name is Bill Hendricks, and he is awesome. As you can see, they're really cool bowls. I'm all excited. They have like different colors in the bottom. So you just. Put your soup in the bowl, put some baguette on top like that, get it in there, and then you just take some slices of Swiss cheese or Gruyere, and you put that on top, just like that. And then we take our bowl of soup and put it in the oven, we'll broil it, and it'll be delicious. All right, now Chef Olivier is gonna help me make the clafouti, and we are gonna pair that with a couple of different um, wines. One is a champagne, mm -hmm. and what's this one? This one, so it's a Gaillac. So we're gonna, he's I'm gonna get that open while I get... To open that, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get the recipe going. We have two eggs, and clafoutis is kind of like a crepe-like batter. Yeah. And you can put a lot of different fruits in it. Today I'm going to put cherries and some almonds, um, but you can really put it in anything, yeah. ap apricots or... Apple, peels. Yeah. Pineapple, if you want. So you said your grandmother makes this. This yeah. is vanilla. She's very good with that. Yeah. She was. A, she's not there anymore, but she was very good with that. Yeah. yeah. This is some amaretto. Okay. Because great. it goes with the cherry yeah. flavor. Perfect. Um, I have a little bit of sour cream. Two tablespoons of sour cream. Okay. The nice thing about this dish is it's um it's easy to make. You should make it really right before you're going to serve it because it's best served warm with some powdered sugar on top. But if it sits for a while, that's fine too. This is um, about five tablespoons of sugar and about half a cup of flour. And this is about two thirds of a cup of milk. So what, are we going to try this? Do you want to do it? Yeah. And I'm going to... I'm gonna... 
<laughs> yeah, so it'll be very nice with cherries. This is, um, okay, so this batter, it, it's a very liquid batter. Mm -hmm. It's not too thick. Um, what I've found is I like to pour just about a third of the batter in. And bake it for about 10 minutes first to kind of let it set. Because if you put the cherry straight in, a lot of times it'll sink down yeah, to the bottom. But if you have a little bit of um, a crust at the bottom, then you can put the cherries in afterwards. So you basically just put this in the oven and we'll check on it in 10 minutes and then we'll pour the rest of the batter, the cherries and the almonds. Now we're going to add our remaining batter mm -hmm. and Olivier is going to open up our second pairing champagne which is the champagne champagne so from Bernard Ment in Trélou sur Marne and these are all imported from First Vine here in DC so they're all available on their website uh, with this this is where you add the fruit so mm -hmm. we have some black cherries that have been pitted so you have to remove the seed because you you don't really want to bite down on that mm -hmm. so you just kind of you can do any type of um, decoration that you want you just kind of nice. put the cherries in a circle about two cups or so um, <laughs> <woo! laughs> <laughs> so. now it's a party <laughs> <laughs> now it's a party stuff it's okay here Pour in. There must have been a lot of extra <laughs> yeast in that um, bottle, right? Yeah, it traveled a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it more fun. This is really bubbly bottle. Nice, yeah. <laughs> That's champagne, you know? Yeah. That's the difference between champagne and demi sec. This is the real stuff. So this <laughs> champagne is more expensive than um, mm -hmm. a sparkling wine. Yes. We got our cherries going. And then we have some... And we um, add some almonds, okay, interesting, yeah? Well, you know, because yeah. it kind of goes with the amaretto. Mm -hmm. You don't have to add the mm -hmm. almonds, but I just think it kind of goes with the cherries and the amaretto and kind of gives a little bit of a crunch at the end. Okay, Not too many, but it actually tastes pretty good in there. Okay, now the back cherry, in the oven. Back in the oven. Is it too hot? No, yeah, um, it's For this time, we're going to go for 30 or 40 minutes. So it will um, puff up and it'll be golden um, in color, and that's when you know it's ready. So you just can kind of check on it. We have our clafouti that has been taken out of the oven. It's ready to go. And so the fi final step for this dish is to take some powdered sugar and to sprinkle that all over the top. Just like that. And then you just slice it and serve. Our bistro cooking episode has been a ton of fun, and now for the best part, look at this amazing meal. Uh, I'm going to try a bite of the dessert, the cup of tea, and the champagne. Everything was wonderful. I can't wait to dig in. Thank you so much for joining us on Capital Cooking, and uh, salut!